stage either who has started to put their prizes out. The Radiant Charizard is somewhat awkward. One of the PAL pads as well. Obviously, Hisuian Heavy Ball is within Alessandro's list, so you can access this card when need be. They both prize it, Joe. Yeah, also Radiant Charizard for Andrea. I don't think he plays the Hisuian. That's a bit more of a niche one, but we are going to see the fist bump. It's time to kick off our round four. Alessandro with the Sandro start. Andrea with Luminion V. Not ideal for either player, to be honest with you. Let's see how Alessandro kicks things off here. With not much, it's a pass. <laughs> Straight away, draw, oh. pass from Alessandro. Yeah, the good news is these Charizard decks not known for their gigantic turn one damage. Probably not going to be KOing the Sandshrew. This is more of a setup turn. Get your basics down. Hope you can start hitting your Pidgeot and Charizard turn two. But hopefully Alessandro is going, well, I've got a supporter card, and I'm just, give, give me it all next turn, yeah? I'll play the supporter, <laughs> it'll be amazing. Because unless Alessandro is waiting for a supporter, he's in top deck mode right at the beginning of the game, and that is not a place you want to be. And Andrea has a pretty textbook start, already has a V in play from the Arvon, uh, because Luminion was the lead Pokemon, but Andrea is also going to pick up that Buddy Buddy Poffin, so important for these evolving archetypes to get multiple basics down in those opening stages. We're certainly going to be looking at at least Charmander and likely Pidgey as well within these early choices. Obviously, the attacking threat of the deck is going to be Charizard EX. Also, keeping an eye on those energy counts uh, for Andrea is going to be important because you sometimes need to weave in that Charmeleon as an option. We're immediately going to see the Forest Hill Stone for second Buddy Buddy Poffin, so Andrea is committing everything to this opening setup here. Yeah, I don't mind this. You just want to get set up. You're saying, look, I know, I know who I'm playing against. I saw their mulligan hand, and then I saw them start sand true there's, there's no surprise at this stage you know you're playing against a control archetype so the only two ways to basically deal with this are i'm going to keep my board as light as possible and hope i can chip away or i'm just going to go and try and get set up and win a nice fast game before my opponent gets too disruptive and it looks like they're holding on to a pretty good hand for next turn. They had no option to go Cleffa to retreat and draw more cards, because that's unfortunately prized. But at least Alessandro is in the game here with a supporter, is able to use an Arvin themselves here, so should be developing at least a couple basics here. Yeah, we, we see that Bufalon there at the front of the deck. <laughs> Not what we see very often at all, but it's just a... Fairly chunky, colorless attacker. But yep. it also does put an energy from your opponent's active into the loss zone. So against a lower energy deck, you can try and run them a bit thin with that. But obviously, straight away, we've got a Nest Ball for a Rotom V, which is great for two reasons. Firstly, you draw more cards to end your turn, yay. But secondly, it is somewhere to put that Forest Seal Stone. Yeah, I wonder if with Alessandro shuffling up, not going to use the forest this turn might just hold on to that piece and still just end on Rotom drawing up some cards surprising that you're not going to try and find early Pidgey depends on what Alessandro's opening hand looks like is there any more ball search here bravery charms an interesting one a lot of defensive cards as you'd expect within the list right now yeah, if you want a Pidgey, you've got to use Forest Seal Stone. Yeah, it's going to be a draw three. Holding off on finding just one Pidgey. What's the point in grabbing one when <laughs> your opponent can just hunt it down? Let's just take the additional time to develop double Pidgey all in one go. Yeah, hit the Heroes Cape, the Penny, and the Poker Gear from there. So certainly so some options for survivability coming around. That's what Alessandro's going to be doing here. Heroes Cape, Penny, great combo of cards. Get an extra 100 HP, and if you don't want hit KO, pick up your Pokemon so you don't get too hit KO'd. Andrea's got Ultra Ball and Rare Candy in hand, so it's probably going to have the pop-off of Pidgeot, then finding the pieces towards Charizard, and we are going to see some pressure very early on in this game with the help of... Actually, already has yeah. Candy Charizard in hand. This is an amazing oh, wow. opener. So you've not even used Quick Search, and you've already got your Pidgeot and your Charizard out. So you evolve up into Charizard, you can grab free Fire Energy and attach them where you like. Andrea also plays Vitality Band to hit 119. I think there's Prime Catcher in the hand as well. Andrea could immediately take out this Rotom. That would be huge. Energy going on the Luminion just as a pivot play. But I think with Prime in hand, there's nothing wrong with just taking out a Rotom straight away here. You can quick search the Vitality. Uh, yeah, I Let's love that see. play. I'm pretty sure it's Prime Catcher Rare Candy in hand. Uh, Vitality yes, hand is, is really, really good on this Charizard here. And it's partially for this matchup. Oh, we see Andrea thinking about that Prime if you, Catcher. If you get a Flash Prime Catcher, you have to play it. Because otherwise your opponent can use Eerie. Wow. This is a surprising turn. Maybe you still prime? Okay. Yeah, you still prime. Wants just to bank the fire in the discard pile just so you can super rod it back. 
Uh, that's why there was a retreat before the uh, prime catcher there. But yeah, this Vitality Band is going to make a huge difference. Yeah, it, has it is. to be Vitality Band. If you've already got the Prime Catcher to get the Rotom, you have no other choice. So you're going to go and get that. You're going to hit 4-1-90. You're going to KO that Rotom V straight away. And you're going to be two prizes up. And Alessandro is going into turn two with a Sancho on the field <laughs> down two prizes. That is not a great place to be. That's really not where you want to be. I mean, Alessandro has a large hand size, but still not holding on to much. And has to start finding these Pidgey. Wasn't able to utilize the Forest Seal Stone either with this Rotom getting KO'd. This is amazing early game pressure from Andrea. Looks like he came prepared for control <laughs> with the tech inclusions within the list. Absolutely, and that's one of the reasons potentially for going wide turn one, just going, look, I'm going to get set up and it's probably going to go well. <laughs> and right now it's going pretty well. Um, so uh -huh. what do we have? We do see an Arvin from the Poker Gear, very shiny deck from Alessandro there. I think we need to have Arvin this turn because yes. we just need more basics. And I think Arvin's the best way to access that with Nest Ball. Do you yeah. put another V Pokemon into play straight away here? You know that even with Vitality Band, you can tank some hits with your V Pokemon and then still use Forest Seal Stone this turn. The concern is that Andrea also has their own Pidgeot established. So again, if you put one Pidgey down, it's getting immediately targeted. Yeah. So that could be a concern. TM Devolution is a great card. Alessandro scouted early here, though. There's been uh, already two rare candies played, so a TM Devolution could be huge here. I think that's what you have to do. You have to devolve and hope that, uh, that Andrea doesn't have any rare candy. Because the problem is, you know Prime Catch is gone, but you know they're going to be playing at least a couple of bosses' orders and Pidgeot's on the board. So there is no, maybe they don't have gusting if I bench yeah. one Pidgey, if I bench a Pokemon V. You're going to get gusted. Does Alessandro have energy in hand for the TM Devolution? I don't think he does. Just a ton of item cards right now. Oh, that's bad. Because TM Devolution right now, uh. I love but you can't use it for free yeah I, I don't mind getting a v pokemon there if you get luxray or entei and just put that on board just so you can v star power for an energy card it's, it's a such pass. a weird use of the v star power but yeah that pidgey now it feels like it's destined to just get knocked out next turn there's no way that pidgey doesn't get knocked out <laughs> there is, and, i mean i'm looking at andrea's prizes there's no bosses orders i'm looking at andrea's list there's two bosses orders <laughs> that pidgey's you going do down <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're going to see a quick search straight away from Andrea, and I'd be stunned if it isn't just an immediate find of boss's orders here. I mean, you're two prizes up. Your opponent is struggling to establish any kind of significant board presence. So, thinking about I, Eerie, perhaps, of their own? I you know that Alessandra has a large hand size, at least. That would be fun. I want to Charmeleon as well, because you know your opponent has Mimic TM Devolution. Uh, and Devolution, we, that's also true, yeah. You saw them search it out, so just having something so that next turn you don't need Candy and Jarazard, mm -hmm. you can just evolve straight back up to Zard. Eventually it is conventional wisdom. Yeah, <laughs> Let's take out that Pidgey. And going to go up three prize cards now with Alessandro with an awful board state. Picks up a Poker Gear. Is that enough to keep him in this game? This is a really poor opener for Alessandro. The early pressure of Vitality Band proving so vital in this game one. Yeah, early gusting with an early Charizard, an early Vitality Band gives an early lead to Andrea and Alessandro. I mean, it's another Arvin. We've seen Arvin every turn from Alessandro so far. It's another Nest Ball. The problem is, two turns in a row, Alessandro has used Nest Ball for a Pokemon, and two turns in a row, Andre has just <laughs> KO'd it with Gusting. And it's another Pidgey with a Bravery Charm, but that's not going to let it survive against Charizard. No, still not looking to get a V developed on this board. I feel like there's still great opportunities just to use the TM Devo this turn, because like you said, Ross, Absolutely. with no backup Charmeleon, that's definitely a window that might be closing later down the line. Yeah, and we, I'm pretty sure Andrea's got a rare candy in hand, but Alessandro doesn't know that. Yeah. The Arvins had to be played just to establish this extra nest ball. Alessandro's been churning through nest ball per turn, essentially. It still feels so limited. At least we're going to see a counter catcher here from Alessandro to at least force Andrea maybe to search a different card with quick search. Yeah, it's might still a, to... yeah, it's still a poor turn overall for Alessandro. And it's only a one retreat cost Pokemon, so you're not going to need much to retreat it. Did top deck a buddy buddy pop in? But Alessandro's pass with very little going on there. You just need gusting and a pivoting option. But it doesn't actually look 
Is either of those in hand? I think there's Fire Energy in hand, so I oh. think you can just about get there by quick searching another boss's orders here. That's exactly what's happening. And there yeah. is one power pad in the list, so maybe next time you get a power pad, just putting that out there. Seems like a, a <laughs> decent play. I mean, it's got to be frustrating. I've played these games, right, where you're having a slow start and your opponent has gusting every single turn. And it's kind of annoying and kind of disheartening. There is a Fire Energy in hand, like you mm -hmm. suggested, Joe. So here comes down the boss's orders onto the Pidgey. Andrea goes up by four. Four prizes to Oof. nothing, and has taken out both the Pidgey in Alessandro's yeah. list. So we're going to need some recovery before we can see another Pidgey. I mean, we're seeing the strength of Pidgey. It's all coming from Andrea this game, having so much control over what Alessandro can do by removing threats non-stop. And Alessandro's hand, I'm really not sure if there's much going on here. Still no energy for this TM devolution. That's one of the only sort of defensive plays you can make at this stage. You could do it alongside an Eerie. There's Thought it. Oh, okay. So possibly you can Thought it into Pidgey and get a Pidgeot out here. That would work. One of the great things about Thought oh, is. Rotom. So you can now. So I don't think you have the pieces for Pidgeot EX. So instead you go Rotom. Hope that you can uh, hit point buff this Pokemon. Gain some extra time that way. You've got, for, you've got Bravery Charm. That was searched a couple of turns ago or last turn, but you, you kind of need Forest Hill Stone as well as Bravery Charm. You need them yeah. both, and you can't have them both. Is this just so that you can get your Lost Vacuum? Yeah, we have to get rid of the <laughs> Vitality Band. It's been such a strong <laughs> card, this game. But Alessandro is just saying, no, hit point buff isn't as important as taking away 10 damage from you, because Andrea could also have their own Lost Vacuum and remove any hit point buff. So there goes Vitality Band, at least. So we know this Rotom is tanking a turn. Yeah. And Alessandro is doing all he can to remain in this game and keep drawing cards. So you can see the Lost Zones off to the side there. It's not the use you really want for your Forest Seal Stone. That is not what this deck is really trying to do. That Forest Seal Stone is supposed to get the Pidgeot, and then the Pidgeot gets you whatever you want every turn. Instead, you're using Rotom to draw three cards. The good news is there's only one Vitality Band in Andrea's list, and it's now in the yep. Lost Zone. So there is not going to be a KO on the Rotom, and there's no Pokemon available to Gust. So for Andrea here, it's kind of like a, almost like a turn off. Yeah, what do you quick search here? Is it going to be Charmeleon to protect around TM Devolution that you saw earlier on search from Arvin? Or are you going to go for the Palpad and just use it while you can? Possibly even Super Rod and use it while you can. That's being played right now, but that was pre-quick search. Honestly, they're the two options. I yeah. think Charmeleon and Palpad. Palpad to get your boss's orders back because you've already had so much value from them. Yeah. But again, like I said a minute ago, Charmeleon because, you know, TM Devolution, if you've got a Charmeleon on board, you will have a Charizard next turn. Even just Iono and Swing and force Alessandro to have Penny plus Pokemon from a lower hand size. We know Alessandro is holding onto a huge chunk of cards. You're ironing yourself quite low, which is the only risk, but it could also just put Alessandro on a one-turn clock, which is very tempting as well. And the, 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 low, the low hand size doesn't hurt as much when you've got Quick Search. For Ooh, sure. We're <laughs> going to get the answer here, Joe. I kind of like Iono. I think that's the most aggressive play you can make. Mist Energy. So that also is a way to protect around TM Devolution. Yep. You Mist Energy, either Pidgeot or Charizard. And then you're still even more safeguarded. Another tech card from Andrea coming in clutch here. And I like it on the Pidgeot. You've got Rare Candy in hand, and if you evolve the Charizard, then you get the ability to go and get some more energy. So no love that. And we see a Buddy Buddy Poffin coming down. I think just not wanting to draw into this card ever again. I'm just going to get a backup Charmander, which seems reasonable. Again, thinning the deck at this point. You're in such a commanding position that you don't want to give any openings for the opponent and feels like just removing dead draws is a great way to do that. And it's just going to be a swing for 180, fortunately. <laughs> 180. Who did pick up a basic Pokemon and has Penny in hand, so can sort of reset this clock again this turn just by benching Chi UEX, picking up Rotom V with a Penny. And this is the only thing about control. This matchup is quite solid for you just by keeping your opponent at such low damage output for a long game. But it feels like Alessandro is basically locked into Penny for so many turns of this game now. Yep. And it's awkward. One of the things about Control, you know, a lot of the time, if you're down this far, you, you just concede. But the problem is, Control wins so slowly that conceding game one quickly, it's so hard to win two full games if you're playing this Control deck. So you kind of almost want to hold on a little bit longer, try and squeak out that win in game one, mm. even where it's a bit less likely, because that's how you win the match overall, rather than playing for what might end up being a draw otherwise. 
It's going to be a Professor Churro scenario on Luminium V. Like that. Does that mean we're going to quick search for the pal pad this turn and just get Boss's Orders and Professor Churro back into the deck? I feel like you only really want to use a Churro if you're going to reload it immediately. I still feel like an Iono play would have been solid there. Just punching into something and using Iono is still solid. Yeah, because we saw the Penny did come down. The Chiyu with the Bravery Charm did come down. Alessandro had what was essentially the optimal turn afterwards. Mm. So using an Iono to get around that might have been a decent idea. Instead, it is going to be that Charmeleon, finally. This does protect you around a combination of Eerie plus um, the TM Devolution combo. So it is still helping out a little bit. And it's still just going to be a swing for 180. Andrea, being patient here, knows has plenty of resources to still close out this game. It looks like we're going to see a Hisuian Heavy Ball from Alessandro. Has to be for the Radiant Charizard. That's the only basic Pokemon, I believe, that is in the prizes. But it's also one you kind of want out. Now that your opponent's taken four prizes, that Radiant Charizard's well good. <laughs> it's certainly time for Radiant Charizard. Need to be sure yeah. that it doesn't get return KO'd. I mean, that's a the issue. Careful. Yeah. But, but it is a single prize Pokemon, and that's a Pokemon you can throw into the active position. But no, it's still going to go into Rotom here. I kind of like, gonna kinda like this. Some penny because, <laughs> as we've just said, Alessandro needs to keep using these turn by turn because Andrea's just going to keep applying pressure. And the deck's coming down a bit in terms of deck size. Those penny are not going to be that difficult to find. Mm. Alessandro's been going through a lot of cards here, and you need penny every turn just to make sure there's no KOs being given up. And it, it almost doesn't matter giving up the first couple KOs if you can keep it there. But that is the big if. We see a counter catcher onto a Charmeleon, just trying to buy a little bit of time here to get a little bit more stuff going on. Charmeleon does have that two retreat cost, so it's basically forcing Andrea to maybe quick search a Charizard next turn. Andrea's gonna, oh, sorry, Al Alessandro's gonna keep the same strategy of just hold everything in hand and go lone Rotom and hope for the best. So then that does, there is, there is an I know in hand actually. We've got the lovely special illustration rare from Padea Revolved. It's at the front of Andrea's hands. If you want the Iono turn, you can do that while also evolving up a Charizard from Quick so Search. Good. Yeah, I think it's so good to make this play because even though you know Alessandro shuffled a couple penny back into the deck list, there's no guarantee that he's also going to find basic Pokemon for it. Yep. And you're just really putting them on that clock. So yeah, I think evolving up into Charizard, swinging just two energy on, keeping more around for retreating later within the deck is really handy and even though you're ionoing yourself down to two cards you have a missed energy pidgeot so you know that's not really going anywhere anytime <laughs> soon especially with alessandro removing from play their own defiance ban from their own lost vacuum uh, but no no iono whatsoever just going to keep alessandro on the large hand size and that means alessandro has an easy access to penny now with this poker gear and on the one hand they can't keep Penny in forever. That's true. On the other hand, they can't Penny for several turns in a yeah. row. <laughs> there is a lot, you know, when you're playing this kind of matchup, there is that thinking of, if I just keep hitting, sooner or later I'll run out of Penny. And that might be true, but you are giving your opponent a lot of time there to Ooh. set up what they want. It looks like Bufalon might be coming down. Yeah, this has been a tech card that Alessandro has played since the starts of this format in the EUIC with some energy disruption. This can be a pretty tricky card for the opponent to deal with it lost zones energy rather than discarding them so even super odds can't help out so alessandro has been building towards getting this bufalant established and putting pressure on andrea that way still is going to go into a chi so we're still looking to penny next turn but obviously the high energy attack cost of bufalant means you need to attach over a couple turns here yeah it's free energy and you don't have any energy acceleration so you all need to double turbo and then another energy you're only going to hit for 30 when you bring in the double turbo reduction but it's not really about the damage you're not trying to take massive prizes if you do super powered horns might be your friend it's really just lost headbutt getting rid of that energy <laughs> charizard only plays seven energy total and it needs two to attack Again, it's a tough choice for Andrea of what is the best card. So many good options for Andrea. It makes it hard to scout what's the best one. I think it was an Eerie coming to the hand here from Quick Search. We know Alessandro's hand is massive, so you'll get a good scout of that. Yeah, I like this. Give yourself the information. You know, you'll get rid of a couple of items, which is lovely, but you're also giving yourself the information here of exactly what's in the hand. And don't just look at the items. Yeah. Make <laughs> sure you... is making it clear what's discardable versus what's in hand. <laughs> it's a monster hand. <laughs> it's a ridiculous hand. 18 cards, I think. 
Also, as a side note, in terms of being friendly to your opponent, what a way to present your hand after an airy. We love to see it. Now we know exactly what's there. But getting a pow pow was kind of big. We yes. know that Alessandro wants to penny every single turn, yeah, and there's one in the prizes as well. So that's actually kind of huge. Yeah, with Alessandro with the constant penny strategy. <laughs> that's no, there's no pow pow available right now. Yeah. One's been used, one's in the prizes, one's just been discarded. That's it. That's all free pow pad. Looks like Alessandro is going to pivot to Mimikyu Strat. Has seen a Charmeleon already, and there is no sign of the second Charmeleon just yet. So you may as well try and shove Mimikyu here. You know that Andrea, even with like boss's orders, can't KO the Rotom on the bench. So you're pretty safe to make this line and try and finally get some wiggle room here. Thanks to that fantastic ability from Mimikyu, not getting damaged by uh, EX Pokemon. This is how Alessandro is trying to weave his way back into the game. And it's awkward. If you don't go Charmeleon, then you're at risk of being TMD evolutioned. If you do go Charmeleon, you evolve up through it, and then you don't have the answer to Mimikyu. Whatever you do, Alessandro's got some way to take advantage of it. It's, it's the way these control builds work, and it's... I mean, it's great for Alessandro, so it's not great for Andrea. Did we see what we got off the quick search? I think it's Palpad. So I think we're looking for yeah. possibly Churro and Boss's Orders, or Double Boss's Orders is also a reasonable choice here. The thing is, you know that Alessandro is just going to go lone Mimikyu if you only grab Boss's Orders here. That was the choice, I think, yeah, to Boss double. coming back into the deck. That's what he got. In theory, at the moment, you can go for the Bufalon, and then potentially... But if you, you don't even get the Rotom, like, Alessandro has to take a prize for you to be able to get the Rotom. You've used your Vitality Man, there's no other way to up damage until Alessandro starts taking prizes. So you're kind of at the mercy of, I can KO the Bufalon, but I've got two prizes left, and that's all I can KO right now. Mm. It is going to be the Bufalon coming into the active position. This it does at least limit a lot of lines for Alessandro. Like we're saying, it stops Radiant Charizard being like a comeback threat at times. It can make the likes of uh, Morwile much more dangerous as well as a use case scenario for Alessandro. As Andrea is going to go down to one prize card thanks to Boss's orders. Alessandro, how is he going to clean up his board? If he commits entirely to the Mimikyu loan strategy, we know that Andrea does play the Heat Tackle Charmeleon right now. Alessandro hasn't seen that yet. I don't, think has, I don't think even has looked at Andrea's hand once from their own eerie. It's going to be a Silene. I think getting Palpad's a big deal here. Yes, absolutely. We saw some discarded. That's basically undoing the supporter that Andrea used a couple turns back. But it is an important head split there for Alessandro. Yeah, getting a power pad so you can get more penny in the future if you need is big. One of the one of the downsides is with Charmeleon, you will need to manually attach over two turns. So it's going to yeah. at least give Alessandro a little bit of time to prepare an answer potentially. But of course, it needs to be an answer that just isn't going to get KO'd straight back because then Andrea wins the game. <laughs> I just want to see Quick Search for Fire Energy attached to Charmander here. I think that's a great <laughs> play. I think it's a really good choice right now. Yeah. It I'd... feels it feels smart. Like, this boss's orders isn't going to be that helpful. Is there still two Fire Energy within the deck? Yes, there is. Pretty sure that Charmeleon's still in the list somewhere to be uh, found. It's in the list, and it's not in the prizes, so yeah, it's it got to be there be... somewhere. Yeah, Fire Energy. I love it. It's genius. It's Attack the play. Attached to Charmander Pass is busted right now. You're not carrying the Rotom, but you only need one prize attached to Charmander, and then next turn you attach Evolve into Charmeleon, KO Mimikyu. Mm. That's game one. Ooh, we're going to see the retreat, so you can at least attack with Charmander here first as well. Heat Tackle. Oh, got to love a bit of the old Heat Tackle. It's going to poke through the Bravery Charm slowly, maybe force Alessandro to use supporters like Penny rather than the disruptive supporters or Silene that was weaved in last term with a bit of breathing room. So denying that seems reasonable. I think Andrea's looking at possibly any item cards can be played to protect yourself here, or if you are just going to swing in with Charmander. You are self-damaging with Charmander, so you don't have to be a little bit concerned about that, but it's only 10 damage. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, anything that Alessandro can reasonably bring up to KO the Charmander, Andrea's absolutely fine with, because you've got your massive Charizard, and you'll be hitting extra damage if it does go down. So it's not just finding something to KO the Charmander, it's finding something to KO the Charmander, which can take a hit from Charizard EX, which is where it gets awkward. Looks like going after Rare Candy and Ultra Ball here. Ultra Ball's actually an important uh, discard, because oh, it yes. stops Andrea searching for a Fire Energy from Quick Search because you could just Ultra Ball out Charmeleon. So yeah. it does limit the options a little bit here. And also, Alessandro finally has some information on what Andrea is working with. 
We see a power pad there for Silene and Penny. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, the ideal situation is use Silene to get power pad, and then power pad gets more Penny in the future, and round and round we go. <laughs> it's so impressive that Alessandro hasn't had a single quick search all game, and he still found himself in this position. It's, it's looking rough, but it's certainly winnable from this stage. Yeah, and it's to been... come back from such a slow start as well, really impressive. I mean, about the worst first couple of turns you could possibly imagine. <laughs> well, first three turns, really. First three turns went absolutely horrendously. But since then, Alessandro's been able to kind of come back. We had that one boof on KO, but it's not been a huge amount. And now we see, I love this. Oh, there's no double energy coming down, though. No double turbo energy. So we're not going to see the use of Luxray this turn. No, but I think Alessandro scouted the likes of Churo still in Andrea's hand, so wants to make sure they can target that to make a trapping play more versatile. So yeah. it feels reasonable. Obviously, Andrea can't target the Luxray V here too happily because then it'll just get pennied. <laughs> so it's not ideal. Is Andrea going to keep with the basic fire energy strategy? I still think it's a really good play this turn. If you hit Charmeleon energy, you win. Right now, this turn, you will win with a fire energy and a Charmeleon. And uh, you need tool removal as well. Oh, bravery and the tool removal. On. Of course, yeah. the bravery charm. That's going to... It's yeah. an extra piece of the puzzle. Mimikyu's sitting at 120 right now, and you'd only got There is vacuum 100. in the deck, of course. I feel like Andrea just firing off an Iona is still so good here. You've let Alessandro keep their hand all game. Boss's orders was the pick from Andrea here. When you've just seen a fang snipe threat, it's a surprising pick. You don't want to give Alessandro better choices to fang snipe. No, limiting your own hands, basically going like, look, I've got almost nothing for you to fang snipe, but I can still search whatever I want next turn. It's just going to be a prod from Andrea here. Which does now bring Mimikyu into range yeah. for next turn. Next turn, Charmeleon will be the win. So Alessandro is forced to penny here, and I think he knows it. And that's yep. why we saw the Luxray pre uh, prepared. No Mimikyu surprises. coming straight back down again, no surprise there. Will Alessandro put hit point buff tools onto the Mimikyu once again? That's a small question mark. With the boss brought into the hand, maybe Alessandro just discards boss here instead with a fang snipe. Such an important piece of the Pidgeot controlling archetype. Fang snipe does a measly 30 damage, but your opponent reveals their hand and you discard a trainer card you find there. So versatile. And with this Charmander hitting itself with Heat Tackle, you're also denying that strategy by putting them down to 10 hit points. Yeah, and you might notice here, Alessandro's not really taking many prizes because, of course, taking six prizes, winning the game, that's a way to win in a Pokemon TCG. <laughs> sure is. You can also get your opponent with no Pokemon left on the board, regardless of how many prizes you've taken, or there's what Alessandro's probably trying to do here. <laughs> Alessandro's done 10 because he's so used to dealing 10 <laughs> with double turbo energy. <laughs> <laughs> it actually does do 30, so we'll fix that on the Charmander. Yeah, it is 30 there. There is no damage reduction going on here. We're mostly doing this for the secondary effect, which is right now, Alessandro is not looking at his own hand. He's looking at his opponents and seeing what the best discard is. And yeah, I think you nailed it with a Shiro, Joe. I think yeah. that is got to be the play. I think, yeah, but, but because there's a Charizard X with no energy attached to it uh, on the bench, that's looking tasty to trap, especially oh. if you use the uh, remove the Churro. Absolutely. Maybe it forces Andrea to collapse Stadium, their own Charizard away next turn. That would be some counterplay. That might be an argument that Alessandro instead goes for the boss that was searched. I'm pretty sure the boss's orders were searched last time. Yeah, it's yeah in it, hands, is, it is at the end. Yeah. So it is going to be the churro eventually, I think. Yeah. Well, Alessandro that... knows that there's collapse in hand, so Andrea has the counterplay available to this. It is still going to be the choice, though. I think you're right, though. You have to collapse to get rid of the thing that's going to get stuck. So what Alessandro is trying to do, get something stuck, run your opponent out of cards. If they can't draw a card at the beginning of their turn, they lose the game. And that's what Alessandro is probably going for here. It's what a lot of the control archetypes do. It's not, I'm going to take six prizes. It's, I'm going to get you stuck in the active, not doing anything. And as long as you don't take six prizes, if I can run out every card in your deck, yeah, guide, you lose. We are finally seeing Iono from Andrea, has held on to this hand for so long and let Alessandro have a monster hand size all game. It's now the time to utilize this. Possibly you could retreat into Charizard and make Alessandro have a penny immediately, knowing that you can quit search boss's orders next turn. Oh, I you like also that. kind of need to protect your Charmander as well, let's not forget. No, it's going to be a prod and self-KO your Charmander. This does ramp Charizard's damage output, don't forget. I love this. I genuinely love this. Charizard does an extra 30 damage for each prize card your opponent's taken. Alessandro's like, I'm not taking any prize cards, mate. And Andrea's like, yes, <laughs> yes, you are. 
by Charmander. That's actually a really clever play to get that little bit of extra damage on the board. I love this. Does Alessandro have a penny in hand? Don't think so. It's going to have to be a payment of retreat. Oh, it's not ideal. Back we... into Mimikyu. But we know we can quick search the boss's orders. This might be the opening Andre has been waiting for here. Charizard capped at 210 damage right now, so the Luxray would still hang on with 10 hit points. Yes, unfortunately it would. You're not there yet, but you're not far away. There's no real way to bench damage in the Charizard deck, which is a pain. It was a sneaky line from Andrea. I think, personally, I prefer the retreat into Charizard and just swing for 180. It makes you a bit more committed to... Oh, as we see the Giacomo getting rid of the Mist Energy. <laughs> Alessandro keeping his devolution line open. Really cool. Something you don't see very often, but that Giacomo can make a huge difference. Rotom and it up does, as well. Yeah, it does look like we're finishing off with a Rotom drawing free for Alessandro. The fish comes down for Andrea here. So you're searching out a supporter card, which you... I mean, is it boss's orders? It could just get fang sniped. Oh, it's a risk. You, I don't think you can search the supporter here if you're not going to play it. The only upside is... Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's going to be boss's orders. 210 boss's damage orders. plus the 30 from um, the previous hit from Charmander. That's 240, right? Bravery Charm should hang on. What am I missing? <laughs> what are you missing, Joe? Well, Charizard does 180, plus 30 more for each prize card taken is 210. There was 30 damage on there, so that is 240. Luxray has 210, plus the Bravery Charm puts it up to 260. I'm confused. <laughs> we will get confirmation about that. It might not be, it might not have been a KO. It could have been a situation where Alessandro just went, I don't, I don't have, have Penny, yeah, I yeah. don't have a way to retreat. That could be it. So it might not have been, oh, you KO'd it. It <laughs> might have been, well, I can't get around this. Yeah. And next turn, you will KO it. But it certainly did. It was the kind of things where you're like, it looks like a KO. Hang on a second. <laughs> Sneaky bravery charm. Making us do us maths over here at the casting We hate desk. math. We use our fingers for math. <laughs> yeah, so we don't have 260. <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Regardless, it was uh, expert play from Andrea. The very early Vitality Band was huge. Seeing Palpad double Churro, double boss within the deck list, a lot of respect being given here to the controlling archetype. The early Prime Catcher was so punishing for Alessandro, where he eventually got Rotom back into the mix, but failed to get a Pidgeot at any point in that game. I think that was a big decider. Yeah, and we saw Andrea go out turn one straight away. No mucking about. I am going to set up <laughs> as much as I can. I'm going to go heavy on my board. I'm going to potentially leave something that can be dragged into the active in the later game and we saw as the game went on there were targets for potential gusting on Andrea's mm. side of the board but what you did have was those free KOs early in the game that added up to basically something from which Alessandro could not come back the Thornton prize for Alessandro we saw him use it using that in game one I think the biggest issue for Alessandro now is going to be time yes. that was a very long game one interestingly the Charmeleons in the prizes for Andrea we were talking a lot about that in game one even though it didn't come into fruition oh, uh, so Alessandro has to really change up the game plan everything that you thought you knew about Pidgeot in game one changes because now Alessandro has to win with 18 minutes on the clock and counting yeah a very, like we said earlier very unlikely that from this stage Alessandro is going to win two games and win the match but a tie is a heck of a lot better than a loss so what you're trying to do here is go fast and actually take prizes but Andrea's kind of like you know what I, I, I can do that too yeah and we see a Rotom coming down for Andrea. We saw see Alessandro last game making great use of it. This game, Andrea is going for it straight away oh. with the Forest Seal Stone, which I'm going to shout it out, Buddy Buddy Poffin. Well, yeah, already Buddy Buddy Poffin from the uh, Arvin as well. So you may not even have to here. You can just hold the Forest Seal Stone for next turn as well. Yeah, I mean, this is the dream start. You could clef it up or rotom up, depending on which one gets you more cards. It's ideal right now. This is a perfect opener for Andrea. Yeah, not using Forest Seal Stone yet. You've got the option of using it this turn. You've got the option of using it next turn. The chance of that rotom being KO'd on Alessandro's first turn is extremely low. Um, I think actually zero. I'm not seeing a Magma Basin in the list. With Magma Basin, it's for sure. It's yeah. possible, but I'm not seeing Magma Basin. So that means it's not happening on Alessandro's first turn. And is it three cards from Rotom? I think. I think that's slightly more than Clefa can right now. <laughs> We're going to see Alessandro draw one from NTAV. Pidgey comes down. That's a nice pickup. Can Alessandro use a quick airy here to get rid of any rare candy pieces? Oh, Let's have a look. I definitely saw Ultra Balls in there. Well, there's Pal the one on Palpad. That's tempting also. Yeah, I like the double Ultra Ball. Ooh. You know your opponent 
Yeah, can't Axa? Oh yeah, they still can Pidgeot because Forest Hill Stone is saved. So you can still get Candy Pidgeot, Candy Charizard from this hand, even if you remove both Ultra Ball. So conventional wisdom is to take the Power Pad as well here. Yeah, shut down some options for a couple turns time. But that's got to be worrying if you're Alessandro, because you're like, he's, he's got the he's Pidgeot still got and the Charizard. <laughs> he's still got it. <laughs> I mean, whoops. Do you, is this a turn where you maybe start thinking about using TM Devolution? Like, if they're going to rare candy, I've got a way around it. Yeah, I mean, prepping for that is certainly reasonable, and we do see energy onto the Bufalant for that reason. Let's see the flip of the Forest Hill Stone for Andrea, who can do once again the Candy Pidgeot, Candy Charizard dance. Yeah, so you go and get Candy, you've already got Pidgeot in hand, so you evolve that up, you've already got Charizard in hand, so you use Pidgeot's Quick Search to go and get a second rare Candy, and that gets you both of them. And as much as Alessandro is playing super quick, Andrea doesn't need to. You play at a regular pace. You don't need to speed up your pace of play. We're going to see Alessandro taking quick turns, quick decisions. I need to win this. Andrea can be like, I'm going to play like I played last game. Because you know what? That went pretty well. And do you go all three energy onto your Charizard here, knowing that you're facing down a Bufalant coming up as well? Personally, I do, yes. Yeah, I, I think, think you I like want that, that protection. Choice. No, Andrea I like that a lot. Scouting out an Ultra Ball. Do you want to use it now before it possibly gets here read away? Just going to do the quick search first. Pretty sure it's still going to be rare candy here. You, you, Bufalon's going to get an energy. Oh, interesting. Charmeleon you need to make sure it's taking a slower one. turn here, perhaps. Oh. Possibly because there was a prized rare candy. Andrea doesn't want to run into the trap of just getting devoed, then the entire board goes away. That That's is so reasonable. Issue. Yeah, don't run out of... Okay, I like that. Worried about devolution with a rare candy prize, so yeah. Okay. Get the Charmeleon. It means you're not taking a prize now, but you weren't taking a prize anyway. And take and take a hit. Going to be Rotom again for three cards, I think, from Andrea. We do pass things over to Alessandro, who finally gets a Pidgeot into play. We call this Pidgeot Control, and we finally see why. <laughs> 35 minutes into the match, we get our first Pidgeot for Alessandro. There it is. Is there any useful supporter here? Arvin could give you access to Forest Hill Stone if you wanted to have a flexible choice. Also, quick search here. A lot of options. A lot you see of Miss Energy onto Pidgeot. This is actually one of your better attackers. Definitely yeah. one of the tankiest ones. And if you are going to start taking prize cards, your V Pokemon start getting into range of Charizard. So having that extra hit points on Pidgeot is uh, pretty helpful here. Yeah, and the 120 can take out some of those smaller Pokemon, support Pokemon, the evolving Pokemon. Of course, Mimikyu's gone down, but the thing with Mimikyu is, as much as it's good at blocking, and it is, it doesn't take prizes very fast. And when you've only got, you know, 13 minutes left and you've got six prizes to take, <laughs> Mimikyu can help you out for a turn or two. Just slow your opponent down for, like, one turn mm. to give you a little bit more time, but it's not going to win you the game. So it's a kind of a one-turn help rather than a real part of the attacking puzzle here. Alessandro going to pick up Bravery Charm and swing that onto Rotom, protecting yourself a little bit from that Vitality Band that was so dangerous in Game 1. I mean, yeah, Game 1, Rotom without Bravery Charm did not last very no. long, so... <laughs> I mean, Rotom with Bravery Charm, better call. Going to grab Chiyu EX out of the prize cards from Hisuian Heavy Ball, but the clock is ticking for Alessandro. This is the biggest concern here. He needs to get aggressive, and that's not really the selling point of this archetype. Really? Started to scatter some energy around but you really need to start taking prizes as quickly as possible here. Yeah, Andrea gets an energy on the Charmeleon, just the one for the time being. Now we get a Charizard coming up, so we've got an ability that you search for free fire energy and attach them anywhere you like. You could go super heavy on the Charizard. I think more than free might be a bit too much, <laughs> but certainly free I would not be upset with. Looks like I'm getting one on Charizard. Yeah, that's the usual number you see on Charizard, but playing an extra one would protect yourself a little bit against Bufalant, but yeah. still is already holding on to a bunch in hand, so maybe welcomes Bufalant as an option, knowing that you can just attach and swing into that guy straight away. Yeah, keep yourself able to play the cards from your hand without playing pointless cards. Don't <laughs> mind that too much. Are we going to see Quick Search, maybe even for Buddy Buddy Poffin, something strange like that to get more basics developed, because you do still need a way around Mimikyu at different points. I don't know if you want to keep building or getting aggressive with boss's orders now by the looks of things. Yeah, there's not really much of a good... I mean, you have to get Boofle on here. Boofle on the Sancho are really the, the only options in terms of ones you can actually go after here. Yeah. If you're going to be taking a Pidgeot price. straight away as well. That's also reasonable. It's not as easy for Alessandro to pick those up. 
but it no. is going to be the Bouffalant, just to protect your energy a bit more. Yeah, I like this. Bouffalant's annoying for your energy, so bring it up, get rid of it, and then you can always start working on the pitch up next turn. You've still got a boss's orders, a power pad, and a prime catcher in your deck, so you've got plenty of gusting options for future turns. You just want to get the ball rolling here. Just make things awkward. You don't have to win game two if you're Andrea here. You've won game one. If game two doesn't finish, you win. So you can either take six prizes or you can stop Alessandro taking six prizes. Either will be equally effective in winning this match. Alessandro will be able to launch an attack of some description this turn with extra energy in hand. Can begin using Blustery Wind uh, if needed. Going to pick up a Roseanne's, Roseanne's research. Oh, Roseanne's backup yeah. research was years ago, Joe. <laughs> we were a while away from that. Yeah. Going to reload that Bouffalant. She Clearly would. a card that Alessandra has in mind for the matchup. Yeah, she finished her research years ago. She's now just backing it up. <laughs> Make sure she doesn't lose it. It's like doing a Masters. Yeah. Yeah. You get to shuffle. For those of you that haven't seen this card in the while, you can do one or more of shuffle a Pokemon for your disco pile into your deck, a tool, a stadium, and an energy. And it is energy, not basic energy. So it is really good for backing up your cards, getting them back in the deck. And we see Bouffalon already back on the board, which kind of tells you Andrea made the right choice. That's true. Because Alessandro immediately was like, I'm using my support for the turn to get it back. I feel like Andrea's going to use his support of the turn to bring up the boot for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. This entire game has just evolved into the boot for Lord Wars, <laughs> which is not a phrase I've ever used, and I've streamed a lot of games. Yeah, true. <laughs> Certainly a line right now. It's going to be Miss Energy instead. Possibly Andrea already has access to Boofalant. That's a boss's orders for Boofalant. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, the Bouffalot was fun, but it's not mandatory. <laughs> no, it's it's a lot. It's, it's it's fine, but it's not amazing. It doesn't. It's that? No, I don't no. think I see any gas. So I think Alessandro is taking his foot off the. Uh, Andrea is taking oh, his foot off the gas a little bit here. Don't mind this though. Mm. If you're going to take your foot Iono. off, yeah. If you're going to take your foot off the gas, play an Iono, hurt your opponent. Because the thing is, against these control decks, they're drawing a bunch of cards, they're searching a bunch of cards. They end up with not just a big hand, but a good hand. Yeah. So even an Iono to six can often be a really fun thing to do against them. Has drawn into some important item cards actually. There's Prime Catcher and Lost Vacuum. So you can get around this Mimikyu this turn. Well, well there. there goes Bufalon again, I suppose. <laughs> a free retreat pivot of the Cleffer. And Bufalon is going to eventually get KO'd here. But you can keep Prime Catcher in hand. Exactly. Because Eri is going to get it. I picked Eri as my caster pick for the weekend. Yep. So, yeah. There's a reason for it. Seems like the right time because you can't protect that card very easily. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, Alessandro is going to try and try again to get this Bufalon <laughs> back. So now we've got a super rod to get the Bufalon back again and plays a nest ball. So the Bufalon hasn't just gone back into the deck. It has for the third turn in a row hit the board. And it being a double energy attachment is actually super annoying. We again see the attachment and Alessandro is really hoping that next turn, <laughs> one of these days, <laughs> it's going to be a Giacomo as well, getting rid of that missed energy honestly at this point if i'm andrea i want to gust the booth on just because it's amusing <laughs> like you've done it twice already let's just keep it going well, Alessandro is really proving why Bufalon deserves to be in the deck, because it seems like a really key part of the strategy of beating Charizard. There is boss's orders in hand already for Andrea, so I'm certainly open to him. Oh, it would be fun. I would enjoy that. If you start running out of gusting cards, you have to eventually find a way for this Mimikyu, though. I mean, you got... You can get five. You've got two boss's orders, one power pad to get another two boss's orders, and prime catcher. Yep. That gets you five in total, but you don't need a way through the Mimikyu, because if the game doesn't end, you win. What you can oh do here... I've just seen a huge player, Ross. It's oh going to be the Vitality Band coming back, because Andrea has the combination of Boss's Orders and Lost Vacuum in hand. We can oh. get rid of this Rotom. Now this means you can literally gust your way to victory. This means you need one fewer gusting card to win the game. Five gusting cards will win if one gets a two-prizer. So now we see the Vitality Band with Lost Vacuum, and you've called it, Joe. Here comes a the Rotom. There goes a the Rotom. Alessandro can now just Boss's Orders twice for the victory and there's a Sancho and a Buffalo on the board as it stands yep and we know power pads available for Andrea so Alessandro back against the wall in this game too time's going against him the prize race is certainly against him we can finally see a Buffalo though that's something yay 
<laughs> I mean, it, it's lovely. It's fun seeing it. It has a hero's cape, but it's... Wow, is it too little, too late? It will now take a hit, which is quite nice. Yeah. And the thing is, Alessandro doesn't mind lowering the damage here. You're not really actually trying to KO anything here, because KOing gives Charizard extra power. What you're trying to do is just run Andrea out of energy. But, of course, we've seen Andrea preparing for this. The Charizard evolution a minute ago, they got one energy, keeping two in the deck, because I need to prepare against Buffalon. And if they hit you for to get rid of one energy, and you just reattach it, mm. that'll give you a few turns to get around it. And it's just so awkward, even pennying up the Buffalon takes two turns to reload as well. So, yeah, it's not an ideal strategy, although you have at least removed one Fire Energy from the mix. It is immediately going to be quick search for that second Fire, for our turn attachment. It looks like we're just going to punch into this Buffalon here. I don't mind this at all, because if it gets pennied, you cannot use it next turn. You need to manually attach twice. Here is the energy onto the Charizard. And here is a hit into the Charizard for 190. Don't forget the Vitality Band. <laughs> and yeah, now you've got two options. You can either, well, you can either penny it up and not use it next turn, or you can use it and lose it next turn. And actually, one little play here from Alessandro. Waited until the Lost Vacuum was gone yeah, before you play the Hero's Cape. Nice little heads-up play there to protect that Hero's Cape. There's no doubt that Alessandro knows this deck list in and out. Just how well he was able to claw back into that first game. Even though he didn't end up winning it, it was such a bad start that to get anywhere close was impressive. Looks like the Silene was the choice from Quick Search here for Alessandro to recover some more cards. Not seeing a penny available is there some other way you can try and buy some time here as alessandro or are you just going to retreat into mimic you possibly this turn yeah you can but andrea's got enough gusting to finish out the game we do see a silene coming down double heads is quite big yeah that's handy you've just used the pal pads and that's always something to think about oh the pal pad that was straight away and it looks like a <laughs> missed energy as yeah. well you play such a low count of energy cards and super World obviously can't get back these special energy it's just going to be a swing for 30 again here, and another energy bites the dust. Oh, I quite like this for Andrea. You attach, and then you can just KO, and you have lost a couple of energy. You've lost two out of seven, but it's not the... I say two out of seven, it's really two out of six, because Charizard needs two fire. Mm. So that one missed energy is not actually doing much good in terms of paying for your attack cost. Mm. But you've got enough there for the minute, and then you can just gust the sand true for the win. So I'm going to want to see a power pad from Andrea sooner rather than later. Yeah, it was a quick search for the fire, so not guaranteed with that power pad just yet but it is going to be Project Mimikyu at this stage. <laughs> Alessandro not even going into his free retreater. He already knows he has to go Mimikyu here. Probably has to pick up Sandro as well, although Sandro is blocking the pal pad. So that's fine to sit on the bench. I think Alessandro is safe in the knowledge that nothing on the bench can be gusted right now, as we see the Rosans back up. So it's going to be down to Andrea to get Charmeleon in the mix again. I mean, Charmeleon will work quite nicely. You do... No, you've only got one. It's, it's, it's hard to set up the board state to do it, but if you can potentially evolve into Charizard and then evolve into Charmeleon and get the two energy from the Charizard, you can get it all rolling in one turn, but you've got to have two Charmander ready to evolve. That is yeah. too much to ask for. Let's see how Andrea sort of snails over the line right now because has been slowed down by attacking altogether by Alessandro's Mimikyu. But as we know, you can just slow attach to the Charmander on the bench and try and get that into the mix with a Charmeleon. The Heat Tackle Charmeleon is still in the deck. I don't think it was even spotted in game one from Alessandro, so it may be out of his field of vision as well. It wasn't spotted, but there was a turn where Andrea just randomly attached to a Charmander. So well, it did attack with Heat Tackle as well. So it was using it. Oh, uh, well, okay. It was, yeah, I'll give you that one. I just want to see some turn attachments onto Charmander again. Oh, no, I agree with you, Joe. <laughs> I want to see the turn attachments onto Charmander. I just think Alessandro, with the experience he's got, is probably at least suspecting it. Sure. I think if we see an attachment to Charmander, we're going to see a bravery charm onto the Mimikyu. Could well be the case. Finally, Andrea's going to have to slow down a little bit and can just Rotom up to end the turn instead here. Mimikyu and finally helping out. But remember, there's two minutes left. Alessandro needs six prizes. Yeah, it's right Mimikyu now. buys time, but <laughs> doesn't get you closer to winning. No, if this was game one, down with it. It's not game one, it's game two. At the moment, I'm not seeing a way Alessandro's taking six prizes and winning. We're going to see the Forest Hill Stone flipped on this NTV, so we can see energy onto Bufalant. We basically 
made our strategy well known here. That if you're going to take prizes in this matchup, you have to first remove the energy so that a Charizard can't just swing back into all of your Pokemon. You've given up so many prize cards now that you can't afford one more KO from Andrea. So you have to remove these energy, and Bufflant's the main way to do that in this list. And if they can't attack, they can't win. The problem is, I'm not sure Alessandria's got time for this. No. I don't know if there's enough He's doing what he can, but it's it's just time dwindling down unfortunately yeah and you're getting a little look as how this could have gone in game one with just a little bit of a better start how alessandro could have clawed back into that game you see right now with sanju turning off the pal pad there's no alessandro's weathered the storm so to speak there's no easy option for andrea to actually go and get a ko and yeah it's not interesting iono is a pick from andrea here Alessandra has not been using Rotom every turn, but has used Quick Search over and over again, so maybe that's playing on your mind to play an Iona here, possibly also protecting cards that are currently in the hand and you want them to the bottom of the deck so they can't be hit with Eerie, comes into the thinking. Yeah. Surprised we're not just attaching to a Charmander here, honestly, <laughs> and trying to threaten Charmeleon for game. Well, that's the thing. If you can just get a Charmander with one energy on, then next turn, you can just go energy Charmeleon. And maybe Alessandro gets the uh, gets a Bravery Charm. But even then, you can two-hit KO. We do see an Arvin coming down here with <laughs> Hero's yep. Cape. So I said Bravery Charm. You know what's better than Bravery Charm? <laughs> Cape's a bit bigger. Oh, actually going on to the Boofle on here. Yeah, we want to get that into the mix. Alessandro has made that pretty clear. If you're going to take prize uh, cards, you need to run Andrea completely out of fire energy. It's the right strategy, but we're at the point in the game where there's five seconds left. Yeah. We're going to be in terms of time. I don't know if there's enough for Alessandro here. We will get confirmation that that should be time. We will get confirmation that time has been called. We have had that confirmation that time has been called. Alessandro has turned zero. So Alessandro has one turn now to take six prizes. And I'm going to go on a limb here, Joe, and say I don't think it's going to happen. I'm looking at the list. I'm looking at the list. Anything that can take I'm, six I'm prizes? I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Bufalant's second attack isn't that good. No. So we see, see Penny <laughs> to mimic you. Alessandro just likes being on stream, to be honest with you. He likes being in the spotlight, showing off his amazing creation. So I don't begrudge him at all from just showing us every strategy that this deck has. And he's also just seeing how this game would have played out as well, which I think is relevant when you're going to face more Charizard throughout the day as well. So something to bear in mind, as we are going to finally see the handshake here in round four, a 1-0 victory for Andrea, who is so chuffed with himself. And I would be too, if you're